welcome to sri lata organic farming today let us see what are all the macronutrients and what are the uses of these macronutrients and deficiency symptoms and how to correct nitrogen which is first and foremost important primary nutrient it is required for the growth of the plants deficiency symptoms the first symptom is that leaves lose their shiny and healthy green color they turn yellow and mostly the chlorosis symptom the yellowing symptom appears in the lower leaves so later stages any how plants become weak and sick rectification nitrogen mostly it is uh, available in uh, seed meal seed cakes fish meal and other expensive animal products but anyhow organ, uh, organic growers they don't prefer to give such expensive material to supply nitrogen they depend mostly on crop residues vermicompost and crop rotations with legumes the and uh, compost enriched with manure kitchen waste farm waste animal waste these are cheap and reliable sources of nitrogen foliar application of uh, cow based uh, fertilizers like jeevamrut panchagavya and cow urine supply nitrogen to plants directly jeevamrut can be applied to the soil also foliar application of fish emulsion emulsion vermi wash are commercially available organic nitrogen fertilizers they help to recover crop immediately and grow healthy whenever you are purchasing commercially available organic nitrogen fertilizer just check whether it is permitted in organic farming or not that is more important coming to the nitrogen sub supply with these uh, microbes how much quantity of a microbe can supply nitrogen to the crop let us see rhizobium strains which are used for their legumes red gram green gram black gram and all approximately 20 to 80 kg of nitrogen per acre they add you see how much it is very high quantity azetobacter which is recommended for soil treatment for non leguminous crops including dry land crops adds up to approximately 10 kg azospirillum which is recommended for law non leguminous crops like uh, maize barley oats sorghum millet sugarcane rice these crops especially it also adds 10 kg blue green algae which adds around 10 to 40 kg it is recommended for rice in wetlands for rice azospirillum and blue green algae are recommended coming to the phosphorus which is uh, very important mostly it is available in p2o5 phosphate form to the plants when calcium and iron bind with the phosphorus it becomes unavailable to the plants that is to be considered soils with less available phosphorus need application of readily available phosphates sometimes phosphorus may be present in the soil but it is not available to the plants because it is it is uh, binded with the calcium and iron that's why phosphate solubilizing bacteria are to be added to make it available to the plants deficiency symptoms if it is uh, low it limits crop growth and leaves veins and stems become purple In, under severe deficiency conditions you can see the purple color leaves veins and stems in phosphorus deficient plants yellowing of leaves during blossoming turning undersides of the leaf, leaves purple red and uh, yellowing during maturity are the symptoms this yellowing and all may be reason uh, for the nitrogen uh, nitrogen deficiency also but phosphorus deficiency mostly it is the seen during reproductive phase rectification is 
application of hard rock of phosphate that is rock phosphate either it is soft rock phosphate or hard rock phosphate and maintaining the ph by adding limestone and bone meal actually it is rich source of phosphorus but expensive otherwise bone char can be added while preparing compost itself rock phosphate can be sprinkled in the compost pit itself it will help in composting and enriches with the phosphorus wood ash citrus and cotton waste manures and fish waste they all contain phosphorus when we add phosphate rock actually it takes time to make it available to the plants repeated application of compost and manure raises phosphate and nitrogen levels even potash levels also these uh, excessive phosphorus levels in the soil that could lead to contamination of ponds and lakes that's why phosphorus levels are to be monitored in the nearby lakes and ponds so uses of phosphate bio fertilizers on different crops phosphate solubilizing bacteria vesicular or vesicular mycorrhiza these two supply phosphorus to the plants abundant quantity of phosphorus potassium <coughs> also very important macronutrients it is mostly helpful for drought tolerance and even when excess water is present in the field generally we instruct to give more potassium so that stomata will open and uh, the effect of uh, water logging can be minimized deficiency symptoms it is easy to identify potassium deficiency leaves edges become yellow edges remember that edges become yellow turn brown and curl with short internodal length the plant gives like a tightly packed appearance rectification greens and granite always remember greens and granite granite dust is uh, available for cheaper price which is natural source of potassium but it takes long time to make it available this uh, potassium from the granite dust and soil application of wood ash decomposed farmyard manure poultry manure compost uh, enriched with the corn stalks and cotton seed meal all these things supply abundant potash to the plants the wood ash supply soluble potassium but it raises the ph and makes soil caustic so limited use of wood ash under deficiency condition is recommended it should not be applied too much the wood ash to the soil even if it is deficient in potassium the soil judicious use of wood ash is recommended foliar application of fish emulsion or seaweed liquid is also recommended for quick recovery so with this i am signing off today tomorrow let us see the macronutrients other macronutrients which are called secondary elements calcium magnesium and sulfur thank you